<laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. It feels great to say that finally. I'm Christine Fisher, your host of this edition of Cape Ann Art Waves, coming to you by way of 1623 Studios located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. My partner in crime and fellow co-producer, Jacqueline Ganim DeFalco and I are very excited and appreciative to acknowledge the generosity of our sponsors in 2021. They are Common Crow, MK Fisher Visual Artist, Prince Insurance, Sea Arts, and Sotheby's International. We are also very grateful to 1623 Studios for continuing to broadcast our program on their media platform. Without their support, and actually everybody's support, the show would not go on. More news about us. For 2021, our artist interviews will each air for two weeks back to back, and this will give more viewing opportunity. Uh, we're also in the process of refreshing the look and feel of Cape Ann Art Waves, and Jackie will be rolling that out next month. Our program is all about meeting and learning from area artists and notable art champions. Today, I am honored to have a conversation with someone who has elevated the arts in every community that she has lived in. I'm thrilled to introduce you to Jane Deering, gallerist and contemporary art dealer. The Jane Deering Gallery located at 19 Pleasant Street here in Gloucester is a gem and has been a draw for artists and audiences for many years. Jane exudes a standard that is consistent with her brand and is part of why her gallery is so sought after. Her curated exhibitions are thoughtful, sophisticated, and engaging. <laughs> the Jane Deering Gallery presents contemporary art by established and emerging artists, both national and international, with a strong focus on artists who are living and working on Cape Ann. The gallery also has a focus on contemporary artists hailing from California, as well as a selection of international artists represented by the Purdy Hicks Gallery in London. Several months of the year, Jane's gallery dedicates exhibition space to regional artists. She is one of those talents, quite honestly, who has raised the bar considerably for Cape Ann in the arts. Welcome, Jane. Oh, and to you for all that you do. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's really great to have you on the program. Oh, it's fun to be here with you, Christine. <laughs> thank you. You're, you're, you're most welcome. I, I want to say that I'm especially grateful to you, having had two exhibitions, one in 2019 and one in 2020. And uh, it was just such a marvelous experience. And so I am very grateful and um, just honored to have you on the program. <laughs> well, I want to thank you. Right back to you. <laughs> right back at you. Well, you, you and uh, Rick had a wonderful show. Yeah, we were very fortunate, yes. Oh, it was, and it was so beautifully installed. And then again, when you worked with Donna Castleton this year, it, your standards, please, I was delighted to have you there. It looked beautiful and I was so proud of it. So thank you. Well, thank you. You're a marvelous partner, I've got to say. And I want to say for many of our listeners, I think you have kind of a shroud of mystery about you, Miss Jane. And I'm so excited to bring you to the fore and, um, and I'm excited for you to share your journey, which is quite an adventurous one. So we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to do a segue into talking about your galleries. So welcome again. Okay, well, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity you gave me to think about how did I get here? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, I, I've been asked that before, but this gave me an opportunity to really kind of go way back. Mm -hmm. So I think there's something about one's DNA mm -hmm. that um, is tucked into the fabric. My grandfather, I thought was, well, I didn't know him terribly well, but he came from Holland and he opened a restaurant. And that's mm -hmm. quite entrepreneurial. Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah, I have a bit of that definitely in me. Mm -hmm. My mother and father, both very stylish people. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived in a very modest home, but it was lovely, meticulously looked after and artistic. And so I think obviously growing up as a child, that was a day-to-day -day exposure. Um, <laughs> the surprise to me was how much I loved mathematics <laughs> and in particular geometry, mm -hmm. which had a harmony for me. Oh. Things were not discordant. You know, the cube was very, very... Um, 
harmonious, just mm-hmm. for lack of a better word. So um, those are things that are part of me just um, always. But some very distinct experiences helped to shape this art world. And the first mm-hmm. was working for the architect Ben Thompson. Mm. This was back in the 70s. And Ben was the visionary who brought Scandinavian design and Mary Mecco fabric to the United States. And he built that dazzling glass building design research. Mm-hmm. Still there, but um, I was his secretary. Mm-hmm. And it was an open plan office. And spaces were delineated by these beautiful bolts of Mary Mecco that hung from the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, it was so colorful and so vibrant and so fresh. Mm-hmm. And then on uh, every Friday, there was a lunch for the whole staff. And at that lunch, um, now remember the 70s, so the, we had slide projectors, <laughs> but they were timed, uh, three of them, and they were timed to music. Imagine music and a lunch and beautiful images of his travels and things that he thought we all should know about. You know, you had a boutique education right there working. Oh, I do. It's really hard for me to imagine you working as a secretary, I've got to say. But you were so fortunate, honestly. What What a way to get launched. Oh, truly. And then, of course, I was with him when he was opening up in Faneuil Hall. Mm-hmm. You know, they were going to tear all those buildings down. And he just said, oh, no, 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 we've got an idea here. And it was modeled after Helsinki. So the interior, you know, with the food stalls and then the glass canopies. Now, <laughs> I got right into Faneuil Hall myself by, <laughs> after my days with Ben, I opened a shoe shine stand. <laughs> I just love that. I just love that. You know, life is full of many detours, if, as you have shared with me before. And I think this is one of the most adventurous, <laughs> moxie kinds of things you could have done at that time. You were, must have been the only female, right? On the East Coast, if not in the country. Oh, I, I'm sure. Maybe the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Why not? laughs> you know, and when you said detour, my mother was... A, a, a astonished she said <laughs> we sent you to college didn't we and you're shining shoes but I got a lot of press I was on tv um, and it was a lot of fun so that was my little entrepreneurial uh, tip of my hat to my grandfather I guess mm-hmm. so I did that for um, two years and I actually sold that business Christine <laughs> I just sold it Three people worked for me. Um, they, they've all had very interesting lives. One is now a, a, a district attorney in DC. So, so much for shoe shining. Um, at the end of, when I sold the shoe shine, we moved to London. My husband's business took us there. And uh, this is the number two uh, pivotal moment. Um, we were at a very small dinner party. And I could not believe the food that was presented to me. Mm. It was so beautiful. And I did not know how to cook. I was raised by a mother who, though she was very stylish, Mm -hmm. she was the queen of canned food. (laughs) It was the, you know, back then. So I did not know how to cook. And I asked the hostess, how did you do this? And she said, she didn't know how to cook either, but she went to this culinary academy La Petite Cuisine in London. I enrolled the very next Monday morning. And so I went for months slicing and dicing and chopping. Food, I realized, could be a painting. Oh my goodness, yes. I mean, there's so much artistry in food. Oh, so much. Good for you that you could just throw yourself into that. Well, it was just myself and my husband, no children. I had time and I wanted to learn this. And it was the most, it was the hardest work I think I've ever done. Wow. Yeah, it was very difficult. And the standards of that director were sky high. Hmm. So everything had to be perfect. Wow. And I carried that through cooking today, although I simplify it. So that's number two. <laughs> and that stayed with me, art, food as art. And then uh, we moved to California. 
Mm -hmm. And I, we were in Santa Barbara and I, many years of course have elapsed and I went to a train as a docent at the Santa Barbara Museum of Art. I felt I really should have a grounding in art history mm -hmm. and that was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, I had just gotten really comfortable with living in California. We were so happy there. <laughs> and as usual, <laughs> my husband comes through the door and says, he's got great news and we're gonna move again. <laughs> So, oh gosh. Uh, yeah, but we went back to London and um, I uh, enrolled in a graduate program in at the Courtauld Institute of Art. It was a two year program for a master's degree. And after at the end of a year, I said, done. <laughs> I had two teenagers at home and I kept telling them, do not come near me. Do not bother me. I have to write another essay. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> I thought, well, this is a dangerous way to raise teenagers. So I stopped and uh, going you know, to the Institute, but I, with a colleague, we thought, hey, we have all this information. We can't let this go. And we started a program for the public. We called Art Remarks. It was a subscription, six weeks in the fall, six in the winter, uh, yeah, and six in the spring, one day a week. And it was to explore art, contemporary art. No, art. Yeah. We took people to private collections, artist studios, got them to exhibitions before they opened, took them to the countryside, to different contemporary sculpture parks. We went to Brussels, we took them to Paris, and we devised over five years, 80 different programs. We never repeated anything twice. I think this is just amazing, Jane, honestly. I mean, you know, talk about adventurous and talking about confidence and making something like that happen. I would have been the first one to sign up, honestly. I mean, this sounds just so rich. Well, it was rich. And, you know, if um, we had to make the venue fit the topic. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to talk about uh, Dutch masters, we held it in the Dutch embassy. Mm. where they had these beautiful paintings. If we were going to discuss Rubens, we held it at Whitehall underneath the Rubens ceiling. I mean, it was, so, it was wonderful. It was one, yeah. So, so that also got me, launched me into looking at contemporary work mm -hmm. while I was in London. And there was a particular gallery, Purdy Hicks, as you mentioned, which still I have an affiliation with that I felt had wonderful work and I had bought some pieces from them. And we worked out an arrangement where I would start to bring work on paper by their artists mm -hmm. to the United States to give greater visibility to those artists. So because I was taking my children home in the summer to Gloucester, mm -hmm. I, bring, you know, I bring more work the next year, more work. Eventually I had quite an inventory and I had placed work at the Fog Museum and, major corporate collections and to Cordova. And so I thought, why not open an art gallery of my own? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I had worked out via the telephone while I was in London uh, to take a rent, to, to rent a space in Gloucester. And on the basis of that sort of handshake over the phone, I had all of this art crated paintings, mm. photography, and airlifted to the United States. Mm. And I called the, my partner at the time in the US and said, well, I'll see you on Sunday and we'll get started. And he said, I don't really wanna do this. <laughs> so I thought, gosh, all this art is in the air. Where's it gonna go? And that's when I opened the gallery in our home. Mm -hmm. And you have such a beautiful home here in Gloucester, really stunning. So, mm -hmm. so take us through, and I think one, one image that we can share, right, at this point yeah. is this yeah. wonderful image from one of your shows yeah. um, of a, uh, I'll let you describe it. Well, okay. this, uh, this is actually a photograph. Okay, right. Yeah. A photograph, and it's a unique piece. The artist had made uh, flowers, the cosmos flower with or in origami, and um, developed this photograph and she did a series of these. Nita Madaha, she's, uh, she lives in, outside of London. Mm -hmm. um, 
her family emigrated from India to the UK. Mm -hmm. She did her master's degree at the museum school. She had a full scholarship there. And that's how I met her. And her work is quite beautiful. This is called Cosmoses, mm -hmm. mixed Cosmoses, these beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. And um, she, this is the third series in her work. So that was over my mantle, I think, in the okay. photograph. Stunning yeah. piece, stunning yeah. piece. I, I had the good fortune to attend a uh, few of your openings there at your lovely home and every piece was just so beautifully showcased. Uh, and I think there's another aspect of your gallery that we want to talk about uh, here in Gloucester and that's your lovely shed. Oh, the shed. <laughs> The shed. Yeah, the shed, which was a storage shed when we bought the house and it was full of junk. And so we just had raised the roof a little bit, put in track lighting. And, you know, it's just a raw shed, studs, you know, nothing special, no foundation whatsoever. But I think um, if you're going to show a photo of that shed. Yes, we are showing a photo. And this oh, lovely uh, image was shot at night and it's, yeah. it's stunning. And your shed is just really... What a sweet space. Well, it is. A, it, thank you so much because, you know, almost anything looks good in that shed. Now, this painting <laughs> that you're looking at is a Gloucester artist, mm -hmm. Aby Murray, and it's a large piece, eight feet by six feet, eight feet high by six. And um, it's glowing in that evening light, oh. you know, the, just the doors open and all. But I've had tiny pieces in there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I've had pieces that um, one artist, divide, uh, he, he created a piece in four panels that would fit between wow. the studs. Wow, wow, and how thoughtful. It, yeah, and it read as one piece. So that's the shed, the shed goes on. The shed goes on, yes. And then you had uh, another gallery in Santa Barbara. And I have to say, I love this third image that we wanna show, oh, an installation yeah. shot. I just, I, I think it's, it's so fun. <laughs> well, it, yes, it was fun, and it was one of those shows that gave me a heart attack. <laughs> because this, this young artist, Nathan Hayden, uh, he wanted to use the gallery to do a drawing across all the walls, <laughs> top to bottom, and those ceilings were 13 feet. So it was going to be a major undertaking. And I had sent out the publicity, and it was going to open to a big group. And at the end of one day, he had done a drawing that was about an inch by two inches. <laughs> and I thought, ah, how are we, is he going to get this done? <laughs> but, you know, you have to trust artists. And he said, no, 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 it'll get finished. Don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> off I went. Yeah, I don't know, to drink a gallon of gin or something. <laughs> so off I, off I went. And lo and behold, he made it. And I think you see in this, in this oh, piece, yeah. yeah, that he had covered all the walls with this wonderful drawing. Now you can't sell that, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a drawing. Right. Right. And then he made these wire sculptures that were um, also just, uh, they fit with the fine lines of the mm -hmm. drawing. So that's the Santa Barbara Galley that I had until uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. I closed it then, you know, difficult. Right. Just well, you, you've had a lot going on, quite honestly. You have multiple galleries. I have to say just one final note on this image. I just love how this artist is dressed. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, um, I can't see that right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he was just, you know, really, really fun. Yeah. So I, I think we want to go on and we want to talk about your gallery here on Pleasant Street, the Jane mm -hmm. Deering Gallery. Mm -hmm. which is such a gem. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about your mission behind this gallery. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, I did think that um, after showing work for so many years, right up to 2015 in the Anasquam house and the shed, yeah. that I should uh, find a space that had a greater visibility for the public and a wider range of public mm -hmm. um, and found that magical spot. Mm -hmm. on Pleasant Street with that great big window mm -hmm. and um, the sun pouring in. So the mission there continued on with the mission in Anasquam to show local artists. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, artists, and you're included in this, don't like that word local artist. Mm -hmm. It just 
narrows them down. So maybe regional artists, but I did want to show art by those who were doing very strong creative work on KBAM. So that's, that's part of the mission, definitely. Um, the other part is to bring in art from other areas. And as you mentioned, I have, I know quite a number of artists in California and I have brought their work into the gallery and mixed them together and artists from overseas and brought them into the mix as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's also part of the mission. Right. That, yeah. So well, it, you have a photo, yeah. I yeah. do have a photo and uh, the image that we want to show is of two artists, Michael Porter and Chris Pullman. So if you want to make some remarks about this, yeah. that would be wonderful. Yeah. Now, Michael Porter is British and he actually had done a residency here. That was something else that I was trying to work on, setting up residencies in Gloucester for artists from abroad. And he did come over um, at the invitation of the KBN Museum. and. Um, and he had a grant from the Arts Council and also Montserrat College of Art mm -hmm. assisted with that. So Michael um, had spent quite a bit of time here. He was exploring the Cape Ann coastline. Mm -hmm. he, he's a, a, a literal landscape painter, but he doesn't look out at the horizon. He will look down at what is underneath him. So mm. this large painting is of, actually it's the Anasquam coastline in An the, the coastline in Anasquam. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you can sense the granite in it and pools of inky water that might form around the base. Um, and I combine that with Chris Pullman, who is, um, he has a home in Gloucester mm -hmm. and he's a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. And he also, from his cottage in Gloucester, he will walk down, sit on the sand and do these wonderful watercolors of the mm -hmm. boulders on the coast line. Mm -hmm. So we call that show Two Points of View. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and so that again was part of the mission, combining art from the outside of our geography with art of the inside. I love it. You have you have such a wonderful perspective and I you referred your, yourself to me as a connector. So you're connecting artists to each other, you're connecting artists to opportunity, you're connecting them closer to their work by showing their work, you're connecting them closer to collectors. I mean, wow, Jane. Well, that is a, that that's a yes, I would say a connector definitely so you know and um the other the other thing for the gallery is and this is a big one really is to free up that gallery mm -hmm. to be able to give it to an artist to use as you did mm -hmm. and um and the idea or my thought there is how difficult it is for an artist to find a space mm -hmm. yes and, and right. taking a lease out on a space is just prohibitive right. but yeah and if you can have a spot every once in a while you get a spot and and you put the exhibition together which in your case is easy for you to do but for for many artists that's a learning experience mm -hmm. yes it's how you install the work how you promote the work how you decide what's going to go on those walls and what looks best that takes a it, it's a lot of arranging and thinking and reordering things that's right it takes it takes a lot of time and it's also hard work it's physically hard work oh, to, to oh. produce and install a show right and mm -hmm. i think you mentioned before you know wouldn't it be a good thing if art institutions spent a little more time on education around really what's involved with producing one's own exhibition. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I've, I've given a couple of talks at different art schools about that, you mm -hmm. know, about, well, you have a studio program here, but what are you going to do once mm -hmm. you're out of this institution? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get the word out and how are you going to show yourself and your work right. in a professional manner? Mm -hmm. so, so that has helped, you know, in the, in the, um, we're also trying to explore different ways of making art and showing art and a good you know right now we have Aiden Murray's light installation. Yes it's fantastic by the way I just love uh, 
the illumination of that and to see it at night is just spectacular. Isn't it? It glows. So uh, we, you know, we were lucky, Aiden and I, that we had a free spot this mm -hmm. month of December. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the perfect month to show something like that as the days just get so short. Yes. And the yeah. darkness comes on so quickly. Yeah. Well, it's simple and crisp too, which I really love and, oh. and it just glows as you say. We have a fifth image here that we wanna talk about before we close out our, our time together. And the fifth image is from your shed again. <laughs> so we're back at your lovely home. And I'd love for you to talk about this because I one of the things that I so admire about you, Jane, is how you challenge us, how you provoke us really. Uh, and this particular installation is by Lillian Sue. So walk us through this. I will. Yes, this is this goes back a few years. Lillian is the uh, director of public art and exhibitions for the city of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. and I met her when she was living in Gloucester mm -hmm. and I offered her the shed. And she at the time, she said, uh, what my interest is, is in putting a spotlight on how damaging it is to our daughters mm -hmm. to always see the female image represented in a very glamorous, <laughs> photoshopped, mm -hmm. sexy way on magazine covers. Mm -hmm. And we see it so much in the grocery store and the news kiosk. And so she built in that shed a faux newsstand. Mm -hmm. He built the shelves. She cut all of these uh, shapes out of birch plywood that would replicate, stand in for a magazine on a shelf. Mm. And they were all blank. Mm. And the title of the show was called Beautiful Just the Way You Are. God, I love it. Yep, unadorned, not photoshopped, just the way you are, tall, short, fat, thin, whatever. And she had a stack of posters, and that's what it said across the top. It was stylized as though it was Time Magazine. You know, it had the font of Time Magazine and the uh, line around it, and it said, beautiful just the way you are, and it, there was nothing in the center. So clever, honestly. Really, well, really that's clever. It's a lot of work for Lily. A lot, yeah, a lot of work, and, and what a message. What so, a message. Mm. Yeah. Jane, I have to toast you. Here's to you. Here's to oh. all that you do for all of us on Cape Ann and Greater Boston. Oh, You're such crazy. a phenomenal advocate and such a phenomenal champion. And yeah. for those who are listening who would like to learn more about you and visit your website, your URL is janedeeringgallery.com. Dot com. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah, and no, for, for yeah. our listeners, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Common Crow, MK Fisher, Visual Artist, Prince, uh, Prince, Ins Prince Insurance, spit it out, Sea Arts and Sotheby's International, and a huge thanks to 1623 Studios and to all of you for listening. This program can be viewed on 1623 Studios' social media platform to include YouTube, Facebook, and Channel 12. Happy New Year, everyone. Great to see you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>